Today, there's no more gaming on Windows 7 or 8. The first benchmark on AMD's new Ryzen Hybrid Core CPU, NVIDIA is releasing a ton of GPUs, and big problems may be coming for NVIDIA GPU owners. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, I have some bad news for anyone still running Windows 7 or Windows 8 operating systems. It looks like very soon you won't be able to play most of your games. The story comes from a new blog post by Valve titled Windows 7 and Windows 8 Support, and they say right in the first sentence that as of January 1st, 2024, Steam will officially stop supporting Windows 7, 8, and 8.1 operating systems. And it isn't just that you won't get new updates, the Steam client will simply stop running. According to the post, at least one reason is because certain features in Steam require an embedded version of Google Chrome, which doesn't function on older versions of Windows anymore. Of course, this isn't too much of a surprise given the company and its support for Windows 7 in 2020, and Windows 10 launched all the way back in 2015, which really feels longer than I thought. Time is going by way too fast. Either way, while it is understandable, it's still sad to see them ending support. Windows 7 was definitely a great OS but obviously support can't last forever. Either way, if you're still on Windows 7 or 8, you may want to upgrade soon. Next, it's time to press F to show respect to your old browser, because there's no going back after you check out today's sponsor, Opera GX, the browser that was built for gamers, but not in some cheesy way that no one cares about. They actually have some very useful features. For starters, they have this dashboard area right here where you can see how much CPU and memory usage each tab is taking, and exit the ones that are using two much. You can also limit how much memory or CPU usage the browser ever takes up here, so you won't have any issues with slowdowns because your browser is taking up all your RAM. There's an ad blocker and free VPN built right in. You can come over here to instantly clear out your cache, cookies, and all of that. Plus, it looks awesome. They offer some really nice customizations like a custom accent color, browser sounds, custom wallpaper, and more. You can add cool shortcuts like Twitter, and they even have mods. Basically, Opera GX is the ultimate browser you don't want to miss. And it's even on mobile. Get yours free by visiting my link in the description below. Next up for today, we have a really interesting story about AMD's upcoming hybrid core CPU. If you saw my recent video on it, you know that AMD effectively confirmed that they're working on a hybrid core design by referencing it in their reference guide for the Phoenix family of APUs. Well, it looks like we have one of the first benchmarks on AMD's upcoming Phoenix-based Ryzen APU. The test was shared by the leaker Zeno, who claims that Phoenix has a variant that comes with a big dot little style design, though he doesn't call it Phoenix 2 like we heard. And it is likely just called Phoenix, it's basically a lower variant with two performance cores and four efficiency cores. Like I've said in the past, they're probably trying it out on a small mobile processor to get the design right and just test how well it could work before potentially moving up to their desktop CPUs. Either way, he shared this graph, which shows the frequency for each core of an engineering sample while running a Cinebench R23 benchmark. And as you can see, the two performance cores got from 4 to 5 gigahertz clocks while the four efficiency cores get from around 2.5 to 4 gigahertz. Of course, those higher ranges are only received for a very quick moment during the test, but Zeno claims that the frequency setting isn't the final version. Remember that AMD's version doesn't use two different architectures. Instead, they just lower the frequency and potentially take out some cache, things like that. At the end of the day, though, I'm definitely interested to see how AMD handles the hybrid core design and whether it can be used to gain performance like Intel has done. Time, as always, will tell. Next up, we have a bunch of new reports on NVIDIA's upcoming GPUs. Starting things off, according to a new report from WCCF Tech, both NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti GPUs are set to be released sometime in May. If you remember not too long ago, video cards claimed to have heard there would be a May release, but they couldn't say for sure. Now it's looking to be the case. At least that's what WCCF Tech claims. According to another leaker, Megasize GPU, the 4060 Ti is releasing at the end of May, while the regular 4060 hasn't been decided yet. Interestingly, he claims that the 4050 is set for release in June. Not only that, but Megasize GPU recently leaked the packaging template for the 4060 Ti, which means marketing materials are being sent to board partners by NVIDIA, so the company is definitely gearing up for the release. As far as the box itself, you can see that it obviously confirms the 4060 Ti is the name. Unfortunately, it doesn't confirm 
any important specs. Here it mentions dedicated ray tracing cores, DLSS3, PCI Express Gen 4, etc. And finally, we have the RTX 4070 non-TI variant, which was spotted over at the EEC. As you can see, it was a new filing by MSI, where they list a number of RTX 4070 GPUs from their subroom, Ventus, and gaming lines. Not only that, but a Gigabyte 4070 was found on the Korean RRA, and you can see it's the Eagle OC. Basically, this proves NVIDIA's 4070 is coming soon. So far, leaks claim an April 13th launch date, and apparently the 4060 and 4060 Ti will be coming shortly after, along with the 4050 not long after that. At the end of the day, it's clear that NVIDIA has a ton of GPUs releasing, and soon. Let's hope AMD has something to compete with them as well. And last super today, I recently went over a story that proved GPUs with less than 4 gigabytes of VRAM are becoming obsolete. What happened was that Halo Infinite would simply stop working if you didn't have a GPU with at least 4 gigabytes of VRAM, which is pretty bad for anyone with a 3 gigabyte 1060. Well, it looks like things aren't looking good for even higher end GPUs. More specifically, Nvidia cards could have a major issue very soon. In a new tweet from Hardware Unboxed, they shared a benchmark from the newly released Last of Us Part 1 PC port. In it, he shows benchmarks of the 3070 and 6800 non-XT in 1440p and 4K. And as you can see, while the 6800 does about what you'd expect, the RTX 3070 has 1% lows that are flat unplayable. I'm talking 7 FPS. So what's going on? Well, according to the tweet, even at 1080p, The Last of Us Part 1 simply needs more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM, at least when you play on Ultra. You'll have to move down to high or even medium to fix it. So it's clearly an issue, at least for Nvidia. It's one thing a lot of people gave the company flack for when they released their 30 series cards. They didn't add much to VRAM, while AMD's 6000 series upped their memory by quite a bit. I mean, the 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes. Some people seem to defend it by saying, that we can't expect Ultra on everything, but the 3070 should easily be able to handle it. Like I said, it won't even work at 1080p. Now the port has received a lot of criticism for bugs, so they are apparently going to work on it, but who knows if they can lower requirements. And even if they can, it's clear that Nvidia's approach to VRAM may not have been a good one. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's upcoming GPUs, or are you just wanting something with more VRAM? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to pick up the browser for gamers down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!